health professionals led by three royal colleges, surgeons, nursing and midwives, calling on the government to either delay or abandon its attempts to force all NHS staff to get the COVID vaccine. With tens of thousands, 80,000 in fact, a unvaccinated workers facing the sack. 85 Labour and Conservative MPs, including the former minister, Dr Andrew Murison, are also adding their weight to calls as COVID restrictions are lifted by the government in England. So is it time also to end the vaccine mandate for NHS staff? Joining us to debate this, Dr Saleh Hassan, an A&E doctor and broadcaster who we have spoken to on this programme, of course, very sadly. Um, Dr Hassan's father died of COVID. And also Dr Steve James, who is a critical care consultant. And you will remember, challenged the health secretary himself on a visit because he won't be vaccinated and believes he has immunity after exposure to the virus and, of course, faces his losing his job. As a result, Dr Hillary is here in the studio as well. Very good morning to all of you. Dr Steve James, um, whenever you've appeared, it causes quite a controversy. You obviously have a very um, strong, independent line on this. It goes against government policy. But I wonder whether you see now, with three royal colleges also calling for a delay to this mandate, whether you think there is any chance the government might change its mind? Yes, there's definitely a chance the government can change its mind because data is coming in showing why it should change its mind. And, uh, you know, if the government is following science, then it's going to look at the latest information, which is showing that uh, there's a higher rate of infection in people who are now vaccinated. Dr Hassan, um, it's a hugely sensitive issue. And whether, you know, whatever Dr Steve James says about, you know, the vaccine and the latest variant, the fact of the matter is we do face 80,000 people in the NHS unvaccinated currently, and that would be a huge loss. Do you think the government should stick firm or con considering changing its position? I mean, I'm curious as to still why people will be so against having the vaccine when there is a vast majority of scientists and doctors who agree with the science that science is adequate, that the vaccine does uh, help lower the, the, the potential of spreading the virus, um, reducing the viral load, and that you are transmissible for a, a much lower time if you're vaccinated. Look, as healthcare workers, we take a variety of oaths and promises and commitment to patient safety. It's imperative. And this vaccine is not a new, it, it doesn't stand alone in the vaccines that we've had. We all know, and, and um, my colleagues will also know, that we've all had to present a vaccine record cards whenever we've arrived for new jobs and posts. Even before getting to medical school, you've got to prove your vaccine record. You've then got to get um, certain vaccines before you're allowed clinical engagement with yeah. patients. If you test positive, yeah. for example, for some of the uh, things that we test for, you're removed from patient-facing uh, uh, clinical uh, jobs, but you can retrain as, a, train as a doctor to work without having patient contact. So this is not unusual This is to, to have to have a vaccine before going to work okay. with patients. Let, do, 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 Dr. Uh, Steve James, let's give you a chance to answer that because I know that you've had it, you've got antibodies because you've already had the virus, but why are you so against having the vaccine when, as Dr. Hassan's saying, you have to have so many vaccines to even qualify to be a doctor in the first place? Yeah, it's, a, it's a very good point and it's a question that's been raised many times. So the classic comparison is the hepatitis B vaccine. So there's a lot of differences between the scenario of needing a hep B vaccine and needing a uh, COVID 19 vaccine. So the Hep B vaccine, there was 20 or 30 years of good quality safety data before trusts decided that people should have it. It wasn't made law. And so those trusts have decided it in the interests of the staff, not about transmission, because if you're young and healthy and you get hepatitis B, it's a serious problem for people. Uh, if you get COVID-19 and you're a healthy working age person, it's not a serious problem. It's, it, it's very close to the flu. It's probably less than the flu now with uh, seasonal flu, with Omicron. Yeah, Another thing... Steve, that... James, sorry to interrupt. I just want to 
the, the, the threat may and the risk may not be to you, but of course you're in a hospital where there are a huge number of vulnerable people and the risk will be far greater to them. So, you know, aren't, don't you have a duty of care to them as well as to yourself? Yeah, I do have a duty of care to them. But if the point is made that I should have this vaccine because I've had other vaccines before, then you have to see the differences. And when you, if you accept that there's a difference between the hepatitis B vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine, you can put that argument to the side and look at other questions. So as regards the duty of care, the data that we've got shows now that Omicron, so data from the UK, from Scotland, um, from Iceland, from Denmark and Norway, all show that infection rates, so infection rates are higher, that's higher in people who are vaccinated. So that completely goes against the argument that being vaccinated is going to reduce transmission. OK, Dr yeah. Hillary sitting in the studio shaking his head. Well, there are far more people who have been vaccinated than those who haven't. So, of course, there's going to be higher rates of infection in people who have been vaccinated. There's a completely uh, uh, ridiculous argument and the data doesn't support that. I think that doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals have always had a, a duty of care to protect their patients as much as possible mm -hmm. to keep them safe. And part of that has got to be vaccination. Now, in an ideal world, everybody looking after patients right now would be vaccinated. However, since we're re abandoning all restrictions for COVID-19, since we're stopping self-isolation for people who will have COVID, there absolutely is no point making this mandatory now for those 80,000 staff because it's a drop in the ocean. But you would, rather, be, you would rather the restrictions stayed in place and it stayed mandatory. I would, They're going to lift the restrictions. I would rather some restrictions stayed in place and that we ease them off gradually according to how hospitals are coping. And if right restrictions... now we have so many people in hospital, so many on ventilators, such a, a high case <coughs> uh, uh, load of COVID, <coughs> excuse me, that... It's, it's too early, I think, and, and I'm not alone in this. Unison, RCN, yeah. uh, and, okay. and, and many but, teachers' but, but, unions but, but, all but, but, saying but it's too early. But regarding the soon. mandatory vaccination of healthcare professionals, there's 80,000 that haven't been vaccinated. Yeah, and some have uh, medical exemption. There's about 52,000 okay. who don't, which is about 3.5%. Huge vacancies in the, the NHS as well. At the absolutely. Moment. So that's why I'm saying that now, since all restrictions are being abandoned, more people are likely to get tra uh, the transmission of the COVID outside of hospitals than inside hospitals. So making, making people lose their jobs over this now makes very little sense. So you would get rid of the mandate? I would now, because you've got so many people with cancer, heart disease, strokes, who, who need hospital care, that losing that number of staff right now when we're abandoning other restrictions doesn't make any sense Dr. to me. Dr Hassan, I mean, that, you know, there is a risk, of course, from COVID. There is a, a, also a massive risk from losing so many staff. OK, so I absolutely respect um, my colleagues uh, expressing their wish for choice. Then I would extrapolate that further to patient choice. Are we then going to be working in an environment where the patient will uh, be asking about whether the healthcare working looking after them has had the vaccine or not? If it's all about choice, then I think patients should also be invited to have choice as to whether they're cared for or their loved ones are cared for by someone who's vaccinated or not. Dr Steve James, just coming to you, if this doesn't get lifted and you haven't had the vaccine, would you, and the government say you're going to lose your job, will you just walk away? Well, firstly, I've got to come back to Dr Hillary's point, and that's that I'm talking about infection rates divided by the number of people who've been vaccinated or unvaccinated. So you've got 24% in UK population not vaccinated, whereas you've got less than 20%, roughly around 20% of people who've been admitted to hospital with the Omicron uh, variant. And what we're seeing in hospital now is still the patients who've had the Delta variant who are still in hospital, yeah. as well as new patients coming in with Omicron. I'm sorry to push you, but we're running out of time. Uh, the question is, if, if, the, if the government doesn't lift the mandatory vaccines and you refuse to have it, are you willing to walk away from your job? I'm willing to work away from my job, as are the vast majority of people who've contacted me. Wow. OK, well, we're going to speak to the Health Secretary uh, after 8 o'clock this morning, and we will put that to him, Dr Hassan. Thank you very much, Dr James. Thank you, Dr Hillary, as well.